Now we'll show you how to begin configuring the site for customer use. Although you'll soon be editing the code for templates, pages, and widgets, this section will show you the configuration steps that need to be performed on the Service Console. After completing this tutorial, you'll understand what you need to do to configure the Oracle Service Cloud application for your customer portal. All the work in this section takes place on the administration interface, so you'll need to log in. Now, find the configuration navigation list. Here's where most of your work will occur. The first thing we need to do is enable permissions for staff members who will be working with the customer portal. Let's edit an existing profile to include those permissions. In this case, we're giving developers permission to edit code and stage their changes, but not to promote the changes into production. Note that if you want staff members to define community users' access to the community, including making changes to permissions and roles, you'll need to enable Access Control. There are several general customer portal configuration settings, but in most cases you'll be able to leave these settings at their default values. However, there is one you must enable in order to work on your development site. Go to Site Configuration and double-click Configuration Settings. In the key field of the search window, type Mod CP Development Enabled and click Search. Change the value to Yes. There are also more specific settings that control functionality of individual customer portal pages. For instance, you might want to let your customers use their Facebook or Twitter account to log in. Maybe you want to define password strength requirements. Or you might want to show your customers answers suggested by Smart Assistant. We'll show you some of these in other tutorials as we set up pages, and you can learn about all of them in the online documentation. Let's talk about a few other actions you can perform on the Service Console. Clicking File gives you a link to the support homepage of your customer portal. Another link takes you to the Customer Portal Administration site, which we'll describe in detail in another tutorial. We'll start looking at the file structure of the Customer Portal in the next tutorial. The ribbon contains buttons for each of the three operations. Staging lets you see the changes you've made to your development site the way they'll look in production. Promoting actually pushes your staging pages onto your live production site. Rollback lets you revert to the previous production version of your customer portal if you discover changes you don't want to make public. This tutorial showed you how to configure customer portal permissions. It also introduced you to the configuration section of the Service Console, where you can modify general and page-specific settings for the customer portal. And it showed you how to stage and promote your customer portal.